I made a 100% playable version of Nintendo's Super Mario Bros. inside of Minecraft. So the Mario level that I'm going to be building is Mario 1-1, or the first level. This is because it's the most iconic and also probably the easiest to build. So I've enlisted the help of my friend Revolving, and let's hop into a time lapse. Okay, hopefully you all enjoyed that time lapse where I built this course. So if you're not familiar with Mario, it's pretty simple. The main premise is that the player starts at this end and has to make it all the way through all these obstacles all the way to the other end to the castle and the flag. Some obstacles include enemies called Goombas, pipes that you have to jump over, pits that you have to avoid, and other things like that. Along the way, players can collect mystery boxes, which are represented by these chests, to help them along their journey. Once they're collected, an item will pop out of the top of the mystery box, which will be helpful in helping the player get to the other end successfully. So you might be thinking, well, Minecraft is 3D, but Mario is 2D. So how are we going to make this work? Well, rather than having the player traverse the course in first person, so rather than having them walk through the entire course like this, we're instead going to use an armor stand to represent the player. So if we spawn an armor stand right here, and we look at it here in a lower FOV, it sort of looks like a two-dimensional world. And what we can do is constantly teleport ourselves in line with the armor stand as it moves along to simulate the scrolling effect that you get in regular Mario when your character moves. So originally, the way that I wanted to make the controls for this thing are just using the W, A, S, and D keys. So these are the keys that you use to walk around in Minecraft, and this would make it feel super natural and easy to control a character. The problem is that it's pretty difficult to reliably detect when the player is pressing these keys if they're not moving, which if you remember they won't be because they'll be constantly teleported into the same spot. So unless I can end up getting that to work, I'll have to think of a different solution. And the way that I have in mind is using carrots on a stick. So if you don't know, one of the few items in Minecraft that you can detect when the player right clicks with are carrots and fungi on sticks. And the reason this works is because they're used to control pigs and striders, so when you right-click with them while riding a pig or a strider, you'll get a speed boost. So if we make a scoreboard objective, and let's call it carrot click, with the criteria of used minecraft.carrot on a stick, and we set that to the sidebar, so the idea is that when we right-click with a carrot on a stick, Mario will move left, and when we right-click with a fungus on a stick, Mario will move right. And as far as jumping goes, there's also a scoreboard criteria to detect that, so we don't have to worry about that either. Alright, so I've added in a lot of the functionality. So as you can see, we've got our Mario armor stand here, and when we right-click with the carrot on a stick, we move left as well as the armor stand moves left. And when we right-click with the warp fungus on a stick, both us and the character also move right. So this works great so far, and so far there's no way for us to actually make the character jump, and there's nothing preventing it from walking through walls, so as you can see we can just continue walking along. So the next step is going to be to prevent the armor stand from walking through walls. Okay, so now our armor stand should only move if there's an open space for it to move into. And there you go, as you can see, we can go up to it and then it stops once we reach the pipe. Alright, so now that Mario can go up to all the obstacles, he needs to be able to get over all the obstacles. So we're gonna add in the ability for him to jump. So in order to detect when he jumps, we can actually make a scoreboard objective for this. So if we do scoreboard objectives add jump with a criteria of minecraft.custom minecraft.jump, then whenever we press the spacebar, as you can see, our score jump goes up by one. And the great thing about this is that it also works when there's a block over our head. So even if we are underneath an overhang, it can still detect when we're jumping. The only thing that we have to do to make this work is to add a line of blocks underneath our feet at the area we're being teleported to, because currently we're just floating in the air. So if we want to actually be able to detect when we press the spacebar, there needs to be blocks under our feet that we can jump off of. Alright, so now the jump system is working, so if I just press the spacebar, then as you can see, Mario jumps into the air and I'm teleported along with him. So now we can do things like move across to the chest, jump up, and then move over, and now we're on top of the chest. And then from there, we can just jump off and then move over to the next section. So from here, we've actually got a pretty good and pretty functional Mario game. We can go over all the pipes, we can jump through everything, and everything like that. But there's still a couple of issues that I have. First of all, when we go up, like this, our camera follows Mario exactly, which means that currently we can't really see anything on the bottom of the screen. So I think that I might want to make it so that the camera only follows Mario's left and right position, rather than his vertical position as well. And with that change in place, I think it definitely looks a lot better and smoother when I jump. So as you can see now, we can still jump around and do everything like that without an issue. So not only is it a lot less jarring, but it also gives us a lot more visibility to see what's around us as we move around the map. I want to fix an issue that I've been noticing as I've been testing out the jumping thing. And that's that if you're on the top of a structure, and you just spam right click, you can actually fly pretty far. And that was just me clicking normally. But if we head back on top of a structure, and I butterfly click, which I can get around 19 clicks per second, you can see how far we can really go. Just, you know, in one, like, 
session, we can just go all the way to the end, basically. And I feel like we should probably amend that, because that's just not a very good part of the game. Like, look at this, I'm just zooming across the entire map, so... I think what we should do is make it so that there's a cooldown on how fast you can right-click with this. Alright, so now that's all in place, so as you can see, on the right-hand side, we have a scoreboard called Move Timer, and whenever we activate left or right, as you can see, it starts at 3 and ticks down to 0, and only if it's at 0 will it let us move again. So this means that we can only move at this speed consistently, which I think is a much better speed for a character to go, and it also means that we cannot go that far if we just jump off the edge of this. Now, if you've played Mario before, something that you might know that I haven't added yet is something called a Goomba. And a Goomba is basically just the enemy in Mario. So throughout the level, there are certain Goombas, and the Goombas just walk back and forth across certain stretches. So they might walk from here to here, and then once they reach the end, they just turn around again. Now, if the player, or in our case, the armor stand, runs into a Goomba, then the game's over and they immediately lose. And the way that you defeat a Goomba is just by jumping and landing on top of it. So I'm just looking at a list of all of the mobs here to try and figure out what I want to use for the Goomba. Now, there's three main contenders. The first one is going to be a brown sheep, and the reason for this is that it's a pretty similar shape as far as all the mobs go. The walking animation of a sheep is also just that it moves left and right without doing any jumpy stuff or anything like that, so it should be pretty easy to code that in. And my other option is going to be a rabbit. Now, a rabbit is closer to a Goomba in size, but the challenge with this is that when a rabbit moves, it also jumps around. So I think for now, we'll go with the brown sheep, and we can always change it later if there's a problem. So in a previous video, I turned Minecraft into a horror game, and the way that I determined how the AI should work then is by using a wandering trader's wander pause NBT data. And basically what this means is that the wandering trader, every so often, will just choose a spot around it to walk around to, and then once it chooses that spot, like this, it'll walk to that spot, and then it'll stop once it gets there. And using the NBT data, we could actually control that spot. And I'm wondering if there's something similar for a sheep, because that would be super useful right now. Alright, so even after looking at the sheep's entity data for quite a while, I still can't find anything that resembles what the wandering trader had. So what I'm going to do instead is utilize the wandering trader's AI, but I'm going to put the wandering trader on top of a sheep. So if you don't know in Minecraft, if there's a mob that's riding another mob, the mob that's on the top has priority of where the entire stack goes. This is to control behavior of mobs like chicken jockeys. As you can see, the chicken jockey is comfortably following me, but a regular chicken on its own wouldn't. So the zombie in this case is controlling the chicken's AI. So all we have to do is stack a wandering trader on top of the sheep, and then input the coordinates into the wandering trader's AI, and the sheep should move to that position. Alright, so if we use this command here to summon a brown sheep with a wandering trader on top, and then if we use this command to change the wandering trader's wander target to our position, hopefully it should start walking towards us. Well, it's moving very slowly, but it is going, so we should be able to fix this with a little bit of speed. So if we give the sheep speed 5, then there we go, he goes a lot faster, and we can also change this with the level of speed that we give him. Alright, I've coded in the positions for every single sheep, and I'm really, really hoping that when I run this command, it works. This is promising. Some of them are not moving which is less promising. But they're all moving now. Okay, so next up, I wanna work on making the Goombas actually work, because currently they just walk around, but if we jump on them or anything, nothing happens, and if we run into them, nothing happens again. So we need to make it so that the Goombas actually damage you, and if you jump on them, they actually die. All right, so now if we jump on top of a Goomba, then it'll die. So let me just show you guys that. Okay, so now when the player comes in contact with a Goomba like so, they pop out of the front of the screen and fall down into the void. Oh, and at the end, I'll use a resource pack to add in all the proper sounds. And now, if the player falls into one of the lovely chasms we've built, they will also die. So if we kill some of these Goombas, and then we just head over to the chasm, and we jump inside, as you can see, the player will die, just like that. And just to finish off the Goomba, I've added in some finishing touches, like making Mario bounce when he hits it, as well as hiding the watering crater on top. Okay, so now that we've got all the enemies done, the next thing I want to work on is adding in the mystery boxes. Now, the mystery boxes, which are represented by these chests, can contain a variety of items in Mario, and today we're going to be adding in three of them. Now, those three items are the superstar, the fire flower, and the coin. The superstar, as many of you will remember from my Mario Kart video, is an item that the player can use to gain invincibility. It'll also make it so that any Goombas that they walk into will instantly die. The fire flower is an item that we haven't seen before. This is basically an item that, when the player activates it, it'll let them shoot fireballs out of their face. And finally, we have the coin. 
The coin just adds to your total points at the end of the game. Now, I'm not sure if I'm actually going to have a point system at the end, because that's going to be quite a lot of work to add, but if I do end up having it, that will add to it. Otherwise, it'll just be sort of a null item, so that you have a chance to get something bad from the mystery box. Okay, so I've added in detection for when you open up a mystery box. So if we now go underneath a mystery box, and we jump underneath it, then as you can see, we get a message in chat that says box opened, and it gets set to andesite, which means that we can now detect when the box gets opened. So the first thing that I want to add is going to be the superstar. So now when we get a mystery box, we have a 1 in 10 chance of that happening, where we get a bunch of particles underneath our feet. And I might change the particle position later, but for now, let me just show you guys what happens when we actually go near a Goomba. So instead of jumping on top of it, we can- oh, let me just wait for it to go away so you can see this. We can actually just walk into it and it'll still die. And like I said, all of the music and sound effects and stuff will come at the end with the resource pack. Alright, so I've gone ahead and introduced the last two mystery box items, which are the coin, as you can see in the sidebar here, as well as the fire flower. So if we go over here and we grab ourselves a mystery box, then there we go, we got a fire flower, so we can jump up, we can grab it, and now, as you see, we have some fire particles. So when we press shift, it'll throw a fireball. And that fireball will go until it either hits a block or hits a Goomba. And, oh, there we just got a superstar. I also added in some text above the hotbar so that you can see what item we got. And as you saw there, we just got a coin, and our coins went up by one. Alright, let me show you guys what actually happens when we attack a Goomba with a Fire Flower. So if we press Shift, as you can see, it launches a fireball and kills the Goomba. Just like so. So now, we've done Mario's movement, we've added the Mystery Box, we've added the jumping, and we've added everything else that we need, other than the sound effects and a couple finishing touches. So I'll get those things done, and this is the final product.